This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into God's presence with a song. I'm the pastor at Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish, which is made up of Emanuel Lutheran, which is south of Compton, Illinois, and First Lutheran, where I am now, which is in Lee, Illinois. It's good to have you here with us, joining us via uh, the internet uh, and YouTube. We provide this service during this time of pandemic, as many of you uh, don't feel safe uh, going to houses of worship, which we fully understand. We have recently started in-person worship at Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. Uh, this week, uh, we are gathering at First Lutheran at 8.30 and 10.30. Next week, if you'd like to join us, we'll be gathering at Emmanuel at 8.30 and 10.30. Uh, we do ask you to call ahead. You'll hear details of that later in the service during the announcements. We are so glad to have you join us. Uh, we hope that you uh, find a way to connect with God and with your brothers and sisters in Christ as we provide this worship video. We continue the service with the confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive to sin and, and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be to God, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the 
cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth, and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish the wit that which I propose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come a up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The psalm for the sixth Sunday after Pentecost comes from Psalm 65, 1 through 13. You are to be praised, O God in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer, to you all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Here ends the psalm. The second reading comes from Romans chapter 8, verse 1 through 11. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give, you, give life to your mortal bodies, also through his Spirit that dwells in you. 
The Holy Gospel according to the 13th chapter of Matthew. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat there, and the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, The sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they had not much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell upon thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Later, Jesus said, Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is he who hears the word, and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among the thorns, this is he who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the delight in riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is he who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. Before I get deep into my message this morning, please indulge me and allow me to take you on a short trip as I show you the various garden projects the Schlesingers had been up to in this time of pandemic. So this is our garden. It's been a number of years since we've had a garden. Uh, but we're pretty pleased it's doing very well. Uh, these are our, we're not actually sure if they're uh, yellow squash or yellow zucchini, but whatever they are, they are doing marvelously. So if you would like some, we are going to have plenty. We'll have plenty to share uh, with the Bountiful Garden as well. Uh, over here are our beans that we just rescued because the yellow squash were overtaking them, so we had to uh, confine the yellow squash and now they've started to take off and soon well maybe not so soon but pretty s sometime later this summer we're gonna have tons of cantaloupe as these are our cantaloupe it's kind of fun there's a sunflower that came up in the midst of our cantaloupe and then at the uh, back edge of our garden uh, we have a, a row of carrots, which we also had to, it's on the other side of those yellow squash, we had to rescue those uh, also from our yellow zucchini. Uh, and we have a row of peppers. Uh, we've got some, here's our, our jalapeno peppers, we've been able to enjoy that. Our other peppers are a little behind. Uh, on the other side uh, is a, another pepper plant that's starting to blossom. first crop we got was of our uh, red beets, uh, which I'm pretty excited about because I love red beets and for the first time ever I've grown them uh, and I have a, uh, a batch of pickled beets that I did all by myself. It may not be as good as some of them I've had, uh, but it is my first batch and I'm pretty excited. And then here's our cucumbers and we're starting to get cucumbers and we're going to get a lot like cucumbers let us know we'll have plenty of those but perhaps uh, one of the more exciting parts of our garden 
our, our tomato plants. Here's a couple of uh, cherry tomato plants that we bought and, and put in and they've been producing. But these ones right here, these are the tomato plants that I grew. Remember my Easter video? They were just little seedlings. Well, here they are. Uh, they are taking off. We got blossoms. We haven't got a uh, tomato off of them yet, but oh, as I see, there are a couple coming on here. I don't know if you can see that. We'll see if we can get in there. Uh, there is a tomato in there. There it is. Um, so they are producing, and, and soon we will have a tomato from them. I also uh, plant, made a little sunflower plot, and we've had troubles with this. Uh, we got three nice rows and everything was coming up, but something came along and uprooted most of my plants. And this is what's left. Uh, we'll see if they go. I don't know if it was the gophers that uprooted them or squirrels or what it was. Uh, but I have replanted and right now there's just one little, just there, there he is. He just came up the other day. One little uh, sunflower coming up. Uh, hopefully we'll fill this in a little bit. They might be late sunflowers, uh, but uh, we'll see what happens with these. Just last week we planted a couple mounds of pumpkins, trying to time them so they'll be ready uh, come Halloween. And one mound, they just popped up yesterday and they're uh, growing. And just today, after last night's storm, uh, the second mound has two of them popping up. You can see them there. Um, and so hopefully we'll have pumpkins come October. And Teresa, for the first time, uh, is working on growing some herbs. She's got some, uh, I believe this is basil down here. These are actually some leeks that she's planted. She's also, she's also got a planter with some herbs in it. I know she planted some cilantro in there. I'm not sure that's coming up. And I'm, I'm not quite sure what this plant is, but it's thriving, whatever it is. The final piece of gardening I've done this year is perhaps the one I'm as excited about as any of them. I'm trying to put in a pollinator slash butterfly uh, plot. And uh, I've got this long area that's been planted with a variety of seeds. It's got a bluebird house on either side. Um, it, there's all kinds of things coming up. I have not weeded it because I'm not sure what's what in here. We had a couple different boxes and a few different bags of various wildflower seeds uh, and very little has bloomed yet, but we got plenty coming up. As you can see, uh, our very first uh, flower that we planted bloomed yesterday. Uh, our first bloom, I should say. Uh, there's those little white flowers that got blown over by the storm and I'm just seeing uh, some little white flowers here. And this is the first time I've seen those. Uh, so we got some coming in. A couple years ago, uh, when I was at Freedom in Oregon and they had the Memorial Day work uh, camp for uh, LOMC, I took control of a, a little plot of ground outside of the dining hall uh, and I uh, killed it all and took all the weeds out and I planted wildflowers in it. And I was so excited uh, that there would be wildflowers as it came out of the dining hall. Uh, but just a few days after I planted it, oh, oh by the way, there's a, a rogue piece of corn coming up in the middle of my uh, butterfly plot. Uh, I think I'm just going to leave it there for now. Uh, don't, don't tell Kevin that we got one of his pieces of corn in there. Anyway, uh, I, a few days after I planted that, plant, planted that plot over at LOMC, we got just a, a dousing of rain and, and I noticed where I put that plot uh, that there was basically a river that came right down through it. I assumed, I just assumed that uh, the water just took all of my seeds out and so I just kind of uh, gave it up for a loss and figured, well, uh, we'll try again some other time. But lo and behold, uh, three, four, or five weeks later, I go out there and it is blooming with wildflowers, much to my surprise. And I was so proud of that. In fact, I'm going to 
look and see if I have any uh, photographs of that that I can share with you before I post this message. It was that story about the wildflowers at LOMC that I reflected upon as I heard these texts. And I'm kind of excited because probably for the first time in 22 years of ministry, I've, I've seen the parable of the sower in a whole new light, uh, with a whole new thrust to it. And it's, it's thanks, not because I was reflecting on my own gardening or lack their gardening skills or lack thereof, but because I heard the words of Isaiah in a new light. Did you hear what Isaiah said about what we do as people of God, about the word that we proclaim as the people of God? For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. You know, when I planted that wildflower plot and, and that rain came down, I, I was quite discouraged. I thought, that was a lot of work that I put in, and I did put in a large amount of work because I was pulling all kinds of woody, uh, invasive uh, plants to get out of that section. It, it took me uh, the better part of two afternoons in, in very hot weather uh, just to get the weeds out of there. Then I, by hand, prepared the soil um, and got everything ready before planting the seed. So I was rather discouraged when I watched the river of water flow through it uh, after that storm. But uh, as this text reminds me, as this text reminds all of us, it's not really us that's always in charge, is it? It, it was God that was in charge. Oh, I may have worked that land. I, I, I may have uh, pulled those plants. I may have planted the seeds, but once those seeds are planted, as every farmer around here will tell you, no matter how much fertilizer they put on it, they still are in need of God's providence of the rain and the sun and the proper temperatures for the plants to grow. It was God that made those wild flowers grow. <laughs> I'm still encouraged to this day as I plant my gardens that perhaps something will come of them. You know, the... <laughs> I, the same thing happened with my sunflower plot. You, you saw that. You know, the, the garden uh, and the large pollinator plot, I, I hired somebody to uh, come and use the rototiller to dig those up. But that, that little sunflower plot, I, I, I dug that by hand. <laughs> and it, it was a heck of a lot of work to get through the soil. And I, I waited too long. I should have done it when it was really rainy earlier in the spring, but I did not. And so it was a lot of work. Uh, and then I planted them, everything looks like it was going well, and something pulled them up. And I, I could be discouraged, but I'm actually encouraged because of reflecting back on that wildflower plot. Much like the words of Isaiah, when we send out the word, God will not let it go out in vain. God will water it. God will give it sun. God will bring it to sprout. And as we hear in the parable of the sower, God will let it produce fruit. For years I've been talking about the parable of the sower being a parable that describes who we are as disciples, that, that calls us to action, that calls us to uh, invite others into the kingdom. But this year I hear this parable as a parable of assurance and encouragement. And a reminder that God is the one in charge. Perhaps we need to hear that now more than ever. I, I have to tell you, it's been over three months now that we've been doing worship in an entirely new way. And, and I'm wondering, are we doing the right thing? Are the things that we are doing effective? Are they feeding the ears of people? Are they growing faith? 
of a hungry world. I don't know. But we continued to do it. Just like the sower continues to sow. Sow even where it's an unlikely place to sow. Knowing that God is in charge. And God will make the word sprout. And God will produce the fruit. You know, we, we can narrow this to just thinking about the words that we say. But it has to do with all of our ministry. You know, the word that we share with the world is not just about, it's not just about our spoken words that bring people to faith, but it's about our actions that bring people food. We could get discouraged because we aren't able to have our food pantries open fully and, and, and we want to make sure everybody has food. But we haven't got discouraged. We found ways to make drive throughs happen, drive through food pantries happen so people can still get, who need food can get their food. As we reach out to the world with justice, however, whatever shape that may take, whether it be with protests, whether it be with the ballot box, we do so bringing the yearning for justice and fairness and comfort and health and food and education for all people equally everywhere. That is us reaching out with the word. It'd be easy to get discouraged. It'd be easy to get discouraged in these times where we see the same things happening in the world again and again. It seems sometimes like we are making no progress. Yet God will bless our actions. God will bring fruit. It may not be on our timeline, but God will be faithful. And the things we do in Jesus' name will not be in vain. Another new way I heard the parable this year, Matthew actually helps us to de-emphasize our concern with numbers. We, we are so familiar with uh, those numbers. Uh, some will produce 30, 60, and even a hundred fold is what we hear. But that's not the way those words come off Jesus' lips as Matthew tells it. He reverses that order. The seed that falls in the good soil does produce, says Jesus. Some a hundredfold, which is just unheard of. Some sixtyfold. And some only thirtyfold. But it all produces. The point being that it, we don't have to worry about if it produces the most. We just need to keep on working the soil. Keep on spreading the word. Keep on living the word. And God, who is in charge will make it grow and it will produce fruit and when we see that word grow and produce fruit it's then that we will feel the words of Isaiah coming true in our lives for you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace the mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. All the earth will rejoice with us, brothers and sisters, when we have spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. As you celebrate your graduation, your brother and sister members of the Lutheran Youth Organization would like to congratulate you and thank you for your faithful participation in LYO. You have shown dedication in your attendance and leadership of LYO meetings, and you have been dedicated participants in LYO activities and events. As members of LYO, you have served God, this church, your fellow LYO members, and the world around you. God has blessed you with gifts and talents which you have generously shared with us. 
as you graduate and move on to what God has in store for you in the next stage of your life. We pray that the Spirit will lead you and guide you. As members of LYO, you have had opportunities to serve and be served, to lead and to follow, to learn and to grow in your faith. We trust that your LYO experiences will have helped to prepare you for the journey ahead. And we thank you for the example of faithfulness and dedication that you have set for your fellow LYO members. LYO members, let us pray. Oh God, we give, we give you thanks that you have led Caitlin and Luke to serve with us as a member of LYO. As they graduate and move on to new ministry opportunities, we ask that you continue to bless them. May they remain strong in faith and loyal in their dedication to serve you through works of love and kindness. And may their lives be a testament to your grace and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Caitlin and Luke, through your service to LIO, you have upheld the promises you made and you were confirmed. Your promise to be faithful in church attendance, to proclaim the good news of God's love through word and deed, and to serve all people following Jesus' example. Do you intend to remain faithful to these promises and to find new opportunities for service to God? I do. Ask God to help and guide me. OIO members, do you promise to continue to support Caitlin and Luke as you are empowered by God's Spirit? Will you pray for them and will you continue to follow the example of service and dedication they have shown? We will and we ask God to help and guide us. Parents, during your child's time in LYO, you have been with them every step of the way. You have baked cookies, you have prepared meals, you have supported fundraising, you have given rides to and from meetings, and you have supported their ministry with LYO in countless other ways. On behalf of LYO, I thank you for your support of Kate and me, and I thank you for the support you have given to the whole organization. Without the support of parents and family members, LYO would not be able to succeed. As your child graduates, do you promise to continue to support them in their life of faith, to pray for them regularly, and to be a guide for them as God leads them in the next stages of their life? I do. We do, and we I ask God, God to help us. We come this day before God to bless you and thank the Creator for the gift you have been to us. We have given our lives deeper meaning and a deeper calling. Through you, we have come to understand the nature of God's love, joy, and forgiveness. We thank God today for the gift you have been to our lives. Wherever you go, our life, our love goes with you. Whatever you do, you will always be in our hearts. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. May this quilt remind you of our love the warmth of this faith community, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And on those nights when we cannot wrap you in our arms, may you wrap yourself in this quilt and know that in God's family you are never alone. Wherever you go, no matter how dark the night, may the warmth of this quilt, the love of your parents, and the fellowship of this church go with you. Caitlin and Luke, go with God's blessing. Amen. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Uh, peace be with you. Well, and also with you. Nice. Peace. Peace be with you. A little louder. Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. And also with you.
Special thank you to all who have offered their talents and time uh, to make this service possible. Special thank you to all of you who participated in the hymn sing uh, this week. Don't have all those names available at the time of filming this, but they will appear at the end of the service. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to those uh, who read the lessons, uh, to Lexi Rebholtz, Alex, and Jim Johnson, and Marie Barnacle. Uh, thanks also uh, to Ron Duval, who was our accompanist this week. A special thank you to all of you as you continue uh, to send your offerings in and support the ministries of Heart of Illinois Lutheran Parish. We, we thank you so much and ask you to continue to use the mail and or online means to uh, support us. Uh, those of you who may not be members or who would like to send an offering in via electronic means, our websites appear on the mail. Both of them have uh, buttons for donation. You can also, of course, use your bank's online banking. Our calendar this week, uh, on our calendar this week, uh, is, includes the tea time, which we continue to have those Tuesday afternoon gatherings uh, via Zoom. If you need to, that link, uh, check our newsletter, check the Facebook, uh, give me a text, I'll send it to you. We'd love to have you join us. On Wednesday, uh, the worship team is going to meet. We will meet uh, via Zoom. Uh, on Thursday, Emanuel Council will be gathering. Uh, one of the topics uh, at that meeting will be to talk about uh, having small groups meet again in the church with the parameters around that. Uh, and again, next Sunday, uh, our worship, our in-person worship will be over at Emanuel at 8.30 and 10.30. And these videos will continue and you can watch that anytime. If you are coming to in-person worship, uh, next week, we do ask you, like we will always will until uh, we move out of phase four, uh, to call ahead as we have to limit our worship to 50 per service. Uh, please uh, call the manual office during the week or pop an email to Debbie. She is the one taking uh, those names. Uh, we do ask you uh, to please wear a mask to worship. Uh, th these are a must so that we can keep uh, as safe as possible. Uh, when you, you're coming to Emmanuel, please uh, enter according to where you hope to sit. So if you plan on sitting on the north side uh, of the sanctuary, please use the west doors. Those are the glass doors uh, facing the green space. Uh, if you plan on sitting on the south side, uh, the south set of pews, please enter the south doors. Those are the glass doors that face out towards the cemetery. We ask that you don't use the east door. Uh, we do have that open during the week, but it's just too many people and too congested of an area uh, to use those doors. The following week when it's at first, of course, there's only one set of doors to come in. Uh, so please uh, enter the doors. Uh, the ushers will open the doors for you. Uh, we will continue to be doing uh, the peace uh, via video and then sharing in our in-person worship that video uh, before we turn and wave at one another. So I'll continue to be uh, seeking people to share the peace. So if I pull up in your driveway and ask you to come out uh, to share the peace, please be willing to do so. The Bountiful Garden Program, which we continue this year, collection days have changed from what was in the newsletter. They should be on the screen now. Uh, July 26th, August 16th, August 30th, and September 20th. Assuming our worship schedule stays the same, that puts two collection days at Emmanuel and two at first. Uh, so uh, more details about that will be coming out in subsequent newsletters, but please note the last Sunday in July is our first collection day for that. Uh, the Nice Center is in need of some particular things. Uh, they are listed in the screen now. Uh, also, I have heard uh, that they are taking donations for clothing and other items uh, between 8.30 and 10.30 on sun Saturdays. Uh, so you can uh, donate some of that stuff. As far as our worship videos go, please remember to share them via Facebook and YouTube with your friends and family. We've been uh, getting a lot of interested people, and so we'd like to reach out in that way. That's all the announcements I have at this time. We continue the service with the 
creed and the prayers. We are made God's people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and hills burst into song and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees and for land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Renewing God, revive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted. Sustain our ministries and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who have died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathered as one in the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, the God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Sent forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from this dwelling day be. The summer is ended, O oh, now be extended, the fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of Christ teaching receptive, souls reaching shall blossom in action for God. 
shall incite us, your love shall unite us to work for your kingdom and answer your call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life we will face. Our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing God's children, the whole human race. With your face you feed us, with your love you lead us, unite us as one in this life that we share. Then may all the living, with praise and thanksgiving, give honor to Christ and His name. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.